podcasting from the spaceship in the sky to the simulation in the mind. Let's all embark on another journey of Conversations on the Fringe. Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. My name is Josh, and this is the Red Pill Project, Conversations on the Fringe. And we are here tonight talking to the Postmaster General here, Russell J. Gould. If you guys don't know Russell, he is the man who figured out grammar postal war and put an end to it. He took down their authorization to exist here and now and put forth a language that allows humans to communicate in facts on contract using mathematical certifiable construct. Maybe you've heard of the quantum banking system, including quantum grammar constructs. Um, his newest documentary, Last Last Flag Standing, I almost said Last Man Standing, Last Flag Standing. And Piercing Dynasty. I just came out one right. with, with a new one. And Piercing yeah. Dynasty. Uh, we're going to have a great conversation tonight. We're going to be talking about the formation of the United States of America. But not only that is this facade of a system that was organized around it. This illusionary system that was created around it that has been hijacked by the, what we can consider this cabal or this evil in the world and kind of how sure. to navigate it and how Russell has really done his research and figured out what this system was, how it operated, and then was there at very specific times in history oh, yeah. to be that person to say, hey, look, there's something going on here. We need to intervene, and we're going to get into all of this. So, Russell, welcome to Conversations on the Fringe. Thank you so much for joining us. I've been waiting for this show for a while. We've been talking back and forth. So, yes, so glad to have you here. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Josh. It's an honor to be here on your show. I'm excited to answer any questions because I'm sure your audience and the audiences of the world, you know, we need full closure amongst ourselves as a society and as a people so we can come to conclusions that benefit our lives. Mm. And governments are because we, the people, allow. And so it's about articulating that and having the necessary full closure. And I hope what the, your audience learns tonight is some of that full closure so they can make a determination which is best for their family, their loved ones, to safeguard their lives and, and to have a happy and, and a fruitful life. So Absolutely. So, you know, I was talking to you before is one thing that I like to do on this show is I like to lay a base foundation. And with you, because I, I mean, I've I've been studying you for kind of months and I remember you from years ago and I've studied you then. And I still don't know the blunt of what you have going on in the research that you've done because it's so intricate. So what I want to do is I want to lay a foundation for everybody. So maybe tell us a little bit about kind of who you are and then how this all came upon you. I'm someone that uh, has always had tried to keep a, a cheerful heart. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we go through life and life's journeys and, you know, we get our hearts broken and I'm, I'm no different than anyone else. Right. I've, I've come through that. And hopefully I've learned to about myself to be a better person through those heartbreaks. And as I did that, you know, I had a concern for society, a concern for people, concern for myself. A lot, you know, I love myself and, you know, I want to treat my fellow mankind in the same way that I would choose to be treated right it, it, with kindness fairness you know i have a sense of 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 truth and I, i'm always searching about life it's a to be a student of this life and constantly learn is just the most wonderful tool of all so i started in the grammar started getting into it in 1995 and uh, you know i started dabbling in the courts in 95 96 and 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 looking at at the time we were looking at the protocols of what they call the law of the flag because the flag sets the venue and uh, we, I got into uh, deep conversations. I, I had judges come off the bench and sit across the table from me, take off their robes. I had judges take off their robes, try to sit next to me and function as my master. I mean, I went through the judicial system. Got to remember, the general public doesn't know this, but the, the U.S. judicial system, they trained me, mm. right? They ultimately trained me and gave me their deep, deepest, darkest secrets, um, number one, uh, because I earned them. And that's one of the main things that uh, I had a judge, a three judge panel in Wisconsin, and they had their robes off and the judges were actually in tears. And they said, you've earned this. We've never seen anybody stand up, stand on the law of the flag, because the flag sets the venue. And, and that's so important that people don't comprehend. When they fly these yellow fringe flags in the courtrooms, they're changing venues, right? When they're placing marks and writings on flags, that's a violation of the, the Patriot, uh, Patriot Acts in Title 36. And so we have to look at these flag protocols as something that's very important. You know, Josh, I watched your earlier show on DEF CON 5 today. And one of the comments from the one of your um, um, news porters mm -hmm. was that when they showed up to the state capitol, they couldn't carry a flag on. Mm. 
it's unfortunate that the people didn't have their flags and have the pre- flag speech prepared to now direct because who are they? Right. Who are they? And what flag are they under? Right. And so unfortunately, Ashley's entourage is uneducated on the protocols on how to move their flag into that. Uh, I, I guess it was um, the Congress or wherever the steps were. I can't remember exactly what the news reporter said, but it was into one of those buildings. Those buildings are controlled by the Port Authority through the Department of Transportation, who gets its authorization from the post office. And your audience needs to really check out what's called ship's papers. Ship's papers are the credentials that we carry on us uh, to get into these buildings. And that's why when when you go to court or when you go to wherever they were, they're asking for their identification. And that comes under what the shipping containment, which I've studied under the birth certificate system. And I restructured that for the citizens on what we call a claim of the life system, which now gives the sovereignty back to the people to now direct and control these birth certificate entities that have invaded our sovereignty of our our, our existence, right? Because that Congress building or wherever they were, that's the people's house, right? And so the people need to know how to go into their house. And so the flag, sets that capacity to go into the house. So it's unfortunate that uh, Miss Babbitt's entourage did not have those, you know, did, did, just didn't know. And if, if you don't know, you don't know, right? So they're not in fault. They just, they, they lack the, the credentialing on how to articulate to our public servants who work for the people, right? They, they work for us. We don't know how the, 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 we don't know how to set the venue. So like, I really focused in 1995 through the year 2000 on the criteria of what a flag did to open up a venue. Uh, And a venue is a place where you negotiate contract, where you freight for bills of the ladings, which are like file stamps on contract, postage stamps. You're moving your your, shipping containment, this war that they placed upon us through this birth certificate birth certificate system, uh, you're moving yourself as a freight forwarder, as a postmaster, and they didn't know your Ashley's people. They just didn't know. And so it's kind of painful for me to sit back and watch because I'm just like, oh, <laughs> so- could have hammered them. Could and, and, you know, you know, it was, it was a very, it's death is a, is an actual thing. Yeah. And when, what happened to the murder on January 6th of that person, who was in their house, but did not, you know, maybe did not know how to go into their house, right? I, I don't agree with the, the approach there. And, and it was a setup for sure by the fumbling, bumbling idiots. You can, you know, and I've had the fumbling, bumbling idiots set me up too and buy a bunch of platinum from me and raid my labs. You know, I'm down the road with the fumbling, bumbling idiots, right? So I have a different communication and correspondence with them based upon sitting down with their grammar professors and, 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 and th- that sort of thing. But, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, she was you know, had a right as a grieving mother Mm -hmm. to go to the location of where the murder happened and, and, and have her grievances, you know, cause she, she lost something very precious to her. Yeah. And, and, and when you lose something very precious to her, it's part of that life's journey that I was talking about earlier. There's a real heart, there's an emptiness in your heart. And there's nothing you can do to fulfill it. And so she thought to go help for her healing. She's trying to internally heal heal herself. So for whatever reason, she made the choice to go there and take her flowers or whatever she was doing. Right. And that was her sovereign choice. It's unfortunate that she did not have the 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 people in the entourage. I don't know what it looks like. Right. I'm just saying what what I heard on your DEF CON 5 on the news report. Porter that was saying some of the things. So yeah. when I heard her say, oh, you can't take the flag in here, it's like, oh, man, the perfect timing, right? You could have <laughs> hammered them. And so it's spot it, on. It's what, that's the venue for sure. So, you know, Russell, I want to actually talk about this. So I actually worked in Washington, D.C. I, I worked at the Washington Navy Yard when I was active duty military. Now, one thing I can tell everybody here, because I've been to various different military installations and federal territories, is what Russell said that, so, Basically, federal land. There's nothing in the United States Constitution that gives the authority for the federal government to actually own or acquire land. People need to understand this, okay? But when we start talking about federal land, on every federal parcel of land, there's always a post office. Number two is that they're all controlled by the Port Authority and the Department of Transportation, which fall under the post office. And he's absolutely right on this. I can tell you this because I worked with maintenance and facilities maintenance on each one of these installations (laughs) I've ever been on. And this is who they are actually under. Yes, 
Yeah, they, they actually and, – and see, this is where they've tricked us with this birth certificate system. Mm -hmm. And they've, 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 we've made a presumption as society to go along with it, right? Yeah. And so what I did is I figured out how that mechanic worked. And then I, was, I got into the bank books and got to read about what Benjamin Franklin was doing. Mm. And I got to time the bankruptcy. Right. And so well, as they came out of an international bankruptcy, I, I could position myself to take the flag and, and then go, you know, I do you, strangely you'd work for the Navy. I, you know, I went into I was working in 1996 through 2004. I was working with Navy JAG, they, uh, mm -hmm. you know, once a month, talked to them on the phone, that sort of thing. You know, I was teaching them about the quantum banking system that I'd created because they had given me the, the suggestion to register the quantum system with the Department of Navy mm -hmm. as a foreign vessel for uh, martial law theaters. And so it was, I learned a lot from Navy JAG just about the protocol of, uh, of global movement of matter, right? And they were in turn, you know, it was a fair and equitable change in trade to service because they were asking me questions about structure of sentence structure, right? Which is the quantum grammar system of always maintaining your facts as facts in a now space theater. Right. So it was, they had many questions and I had many questions. It was a it was a very uh, uh, it was a good experience that I had uh, until they breached peace, you know, and we had to go into the martial law theater. But the Navy is in charge of vessels as they move into foreign waters. Mm -hmm. And so as I set up the postal construct, they would actually follow me around the world. The Department of Navy, uh, their computer programmers uh, for um, their inte intelligence community and and watch and monitor because they have the eye in the sky so they could watch i monitor the meetings that i were in it was in in different banks and different um corporate entities around the world and they really you know i kept a positive attitude i wasn't there to bash anybody i was there to put a st corporate structure in place that we didn't have to comply with these nonsensical um ideologies that I felt that they were, you know, I'd been in the Travistock Society, read some of their theology, mm -hmm. I've been in the different, you know, John Birch Society, read some of their stuff when I was a kid. So, you know, you, you see this, this, this corporate meritocracy coming at us to invade into our private property, invade into our personal space, you know, steal our rights and, and, and basically make us slaves to a system that has been replaced on a global level. And so I, I, I did that and, you know, it was very tedious. You know, I wasn't accepted everywhere because, you know, some countries were like when I was at the United Nations, like China, the Chinese embassy kicked me out three times once they realized I had the quantum banking system They because they kept the bank charters, of course. And then once they realized what was going on, they were the only country to place uh, military um, guard around their flags. So when you go into the Chinese embassy in New York, they actually, under the law of the flag, they take it serious. They know what that means. Right. So they're posted up with machine guns with two guys around their flag 24-7, right? But you go into other embassies and there's no guard. You know, it's, it's a totally different scenario. So it's very interesting to watch the education on who's taking this, the law of the flag, serious and who's not. So explain to me then, because, I mean, there's, there's a lot of ways we can go with this with setting a precedent. So it sounds, though... That at the very heart of all of this stuff, this system that was bit, built up, and I actually talk about this a lot when I talk about this uh, this conceptualization of a theory I built called optimization theory, is that man has created their own system of energy exchange. And this is the financial and the money systems. And this is kind of where we get all laws, regulations, codifications, all, all of these things that derive from that, is this system of energy exchange that mankind has actually created. And so when we're actually talking about here in, in the formulation of the United States of America, a free country when the founders actually created it, that's up for debate with people, but when they created it, they, they created it in a certain specified way. Um, take me from the creation of this country, what y your research is showing as the original way that they had set this up, the way that they had set this up, what they wanted for the people, and then maybe how it got hijacked and what happened to it. Okay, so I was able to get into the Benjamin Franklin bank books mm -hmm. at the Philadelphia Benjamin Franklin post office in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And in doing so, I saw that Benjamin Franklin, prior to the United States concept in the colonies being formed, 
was a shipper and a setter of survey lines for commercial enterprises for, for other countries through Canada, Nova Scotia, and coming up, setting up the seafaring ways. Because at the time, the way of trade wasn't do was done through through moving vessels and cargoes on manifests. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and nothing has changed, right? Because ship, you have your your um, airline manifest. Nothing. It's all the same protocol under the shipping containment that they uh, you know put upon we the people. And in 1775, Benjamin Franklin borrowed 1.6 million francs with the memo to use that to finance and set up the Continental Congress and set up a theater. For because you have to set a venue, you know, you just can't get buildings overnight. You just can't bring people in. You know, it costs money to run communication lines back in those times. You know, there was no internet, right? And so you're having to pay for somebody to go out on a horse or something to that effect, you know, to to get the message out to bring these delegates in. And so that took one year. Nothing becomes law for one year. One this three-day rescission, which would take you to July fourth, seventeen seventy-six. That would be the first day they could legally come under contract and write contract. Not the subject matter, but they could enter into contract, mm -hmm. right? Because the contract was the Bill of Rights and what they were what they were setting up. Uh, and so Benjamin Franklin. Now, did he tell? I have no forensic proof to say that he told other founding fathers that he had borrowed money. I, I just don't have, I did not have access to that communication. So I cannot say what the founding fathers knew or didn't know about that borrowing of the money on July or on uh, yeah July 1st, 1775, right? So my, my and, and the armies were being set up and, and everything was set up in 1775, but the government didn't exist till 1776. Well, how can that be? Well, it was a corporate meritocracy that was slowly coming in because if it should have been done the other way mm -hmm. the people should have set up that borrowing of the money if they needed to or the people should have funded it instead england or france came in is 1.6 million francs and lent him the money and then it was a corporate meritocracy that moved its way in now whether the other founding fathers knew i have no full closure on that but the foundation of, of where that came from, I did verify those facts. So, so that was a different position that most people haven't really went back to look at. And it's, it's very difficult for them to do that because you have to order the post office to open up the glass mirrors, you know, it's all encased and lock and key. So that's a whole nother. And because I'm postmaster general, I just had my postmaster general slip and gave it to them. And they called me back four hours later and said, you're the postmaster general, you can come in. So, yeah, for me, it was good. But for the general public, I don't know how their research would go on that because mm. I don't think I don't know if anybody's tried. So that's an interesting thing to think about. Well, yeah. And so it, it's interesting, too, because the foundation of this country, as it was originally formed after the Articles of Confederation, we had the Articles of Confederation later uh, first. Yes. And then we had the Constitution that came in. We had this yes. uh, this corporate meritocracy that actually was created. But it's interesting to see that money was the basically mechanism of movement is that there's always this aspect of movement derived from money, which is an intermediary of exchange of energy. And yes. so I, I find that interesting. And what I was actually talking to you before the show is that the East India company was really big in the financing and the formation of the early United States, directly connected to Alexander Hamilton with his uncle being one of the direct board members of the EIC. They were against the King of England because of high taxes, taxation without representation. They funded the early revolutionists in the United States, including George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Um, and we see their influence in early America. And we got to remember, who are who is the East India Company? They own the most ships. Yeah. Right. The most ships in the world during that time, one of the largest corporations, probably equivalent to a trillion dollar corporation in today's world value by 1865 or actually, sorry. Yeah. By 1865 and 1871 is interesting because they disappeared. 1871. There's an interesting date, though, of why did they disappear? And I think we got some theories on that. But East India Company, obviously, they're navigating through admiralty law in these likes of various other laws that pertain to the water and beginning the implementation of those into the corporate structures of government. And I think that this was one of maybe the, one of the plans of a lot of this, this global elite was to 
at this point in time, you had government, which was monarchical, feudalistic, might have been, right? And then what you have mm. is this corporate structure as well that is dominated by these governmental structures. And they sought to maybe merge those two, where you have this corporate structure that influences government. And from yeah. there, they can begin to manipulate it. And yeah, once you see the overall construct of how, when they brought in this birth certificate at, in the 1900s, you can see how they numbered and really wrote the underwriting of the insurance policies and set up bundling on QCIT numbers and did all kinds of things where they made money and you were never allowed to be that money, even mm. though you were the the chattel, the the, the person on that. The surety so, bond. Yeah. The surety bond. It's, and it's a, it's a dangerous thing for them to still, that's why they can't really use that anymore. That's why the people have so much power right now. So that's why we see Congress not in session. That's why we see all these things, because it just doesn't exist. And then all came out of bankruptcy when the third and final bankruptcy got paid off in 1999. And they just went totally rogue. It's unfortunate that the, the people weren't ready. You know, in 1999, the, the education level was not there with general society. Right? They were more worried about Y2K. <laughs> yeah. they, had everybody, they had everybody thinking that instead of what was really happening. And so... They moved into, they vacated the, all the guidelines for electing a president. And that was the 2000 election. And it was unfortunate the general public, you know, they're looking at Florida chads and they got everybody looking at the, 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 the theater, but not comprehending what's really being taken away from the people, which was the sovereignty of choice, because now they slid the concept of voting for a leader, which they called the president into a foreign vessel in dry dock called the United States Supreme Court. And then under a, what's called a writ of certiorari, which is a pronoun adverb verb that doesn't say anything to get an opinion <laughs> of what the people need. That's not a certification of a fact of what the people voted on. And so they did away with the guy. And then at that point, they really could get away with legally in the, their legal fiction putting in all these voter scams and all the things that you're seeing out here right now. Congress is in on it, of course, right? And they're trying to pass as much laws for all these, this influx of migration that they have coming in to, to make sure that the people that are here that have a stake in caring about their the, the lineage that they've had here on our lands, the, 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 the love for the concept of freedom, mm -hmm. the concept of travel, free speech, faith, all the things that a found, the founding fathers put into place as a position for us to think that we were a part of, and we were a part of, they then implement, and you can see them crossing all the lines to steal everybody's position of rights. And everybody's still pointing at, oh, they're not electing a Speaker of the House. That's not the problem. The problem's not being articulated because the problem happened in 1999. Right. And then they they got away with their rogue wars. Right. Their genocide of 9-11. Right. Against their own people. Mm -hmm. Right. Shooting missiles into our own Pentagon. Right. The whole thing's a psyop put on by the U.S. Army Psychological Warfare Department. We can thank them. They are a major influencer on how they present things to our society. Right. And so the, the think tanks behind that are a dangerous thing. Right. Very dangerous because they have. They, they are winning the hearts and souls and minds by influencing and waging war through deception and not addressing the problem, which was, hey, we actually need to come up with a, a system by the people to figure out who the leader of the people is going to be, hmm. which is a, a director, a, a, they call it a president, whatever word term you put on that. But we need to go back to 1999 as a society of citizens. We need to fix that. Right. Because the Federal Elections Commission lost its authorization to exist as a corporation. I'm sorry. And when you run for a president of the United States, I syntax all their forms from the Federal Election Commission in 2012. You have to sign in a box. And because of the laws of four cornering, anything in a box is not on the page. So if you're running for the position of a president or vice president, you have to fill out these forms and everything is four cornered, which means there's nothing in there. So now they can come in with nothing in there. Nobody running legally. They can put a psyop on the people and have all this voting where they have all these all these expectations and they cheat like crazy because they can't be held accountable because there's no terms to vote for the leader of who the people want to lead. 
So it's a very dangerous. The problems are not being looked at, which was what happened in 1999 and then the 2000 election of Bush and Gore. And what they really did then, the precedents that the case law that they're hiding behind, dropping everything under the FEMA Federal Emergency War Powers Acts of continuity of government when they lost authorization for FEMA to exist as a corporation. You know, a month ago, I sat down mm-hmm. with the head of FEMA mm-hmm. for uh, the state of Washington and Homeland Security. He approached me. I was I was, I was, was doing one of the things that I love to do, and he was watching me in the crowd. And he, he, he approached me right before the championship game, and he's like, hey, he goes, I work for FEMA. I'm head of FEMA here for the state of Washington. I said, oh. And I said, well, you got a real problem. He goes, I do have a real problem. I says, your problem is your, your corporation doesn't have authorization to exist. I says, and that's a real problem. And that's a real problem. He goes, you know, he says, I've watched Last Five Standing. I said, I'd say, I told him I got a new th- film coming out, Piercing Dynasty. You should watch yeah. it. He goes, I really like what you're saying. He says, the people need to know more about this accountability and taking back control of this because it's out of control. I says, your hands are tied because you're financially in a position where you're accepting the the finances for the federal government for the citizens of your venue in Washington. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that they want one thing and the bankers are telling you that you can do another thing. And so you're in a tough position. I said, my personal counsel to you is next time you're in negotiations, bring me to the table because I'm the number one guy that can articulate fairness for the people. And I will not compromise on the national security of the citizens of our land. And I've told the financiers of Elon Musk this, that I'm not going to chip the people. I don't agree with any of that, right? And they're all into the chipping and they think that's great and that's fine. But that doesn't happen on my watch. And I'm not certainly not going to compromise the security of the people that I love, my friends out here that I hang out with. Right? I'm a normal guy like anyone else. I have people that I hang out with I love. And I don't, I don't like to see what's happening in their day-to-day lives because they're being strapped to a system that went rogue and nobody's addressing what happened in 1999 because that is the root. So so let's start happened. there then. So why don't you explain to, to us what exactly happened in 1999 that has caused these things to happen? Cause I don't know if my audience is probably up so, to date on this. So in 1999, the federal government paid its debt in full to the financiers of who held the note at the time for the bankruptcy of 1929, Mm -hmm. when they slid in into another 70 year moratorium of bankruptcy. And then they had many bankruptcies subsequently in different, different, uh, sent, uh, different, uh, decades, uh, to confuse everybody. Right. But if you maintain the rules of the contingents of evidence in 1999, the federal government announced to the citizens of the country that, Hey, wait a minute, You can no longer pay your taxes to the Internal Revenue Service. Why? Because the Internal Revenue Service has been kicked out of the United States as a collection arm because there's no debt. They then told all the citizens that to pay your taxes to the U.S. Treasury. So that was the first sign that a venue or a jurisdiction had changed. Hmm. Then they had to vacate physically the estate of the constitution and the guidelines for a constitution, which were, we vote in a leader, which is our our president, right? He's the leader of the concept of the corporate structure, the United States Inc., the United States of America, you know, two separate entities. And that leader then oversees the business for the corporate structure. Well, because the Constitution, which was the guidelines for the bankruptcy, mm-hmm. that when that vacated and ended, the United States Post Office found themselves in a crucial juxtaposition because you couldn't be in two places at once. And what I did is I took their flag away from them so they couldn't reset contract. Right. This is very important. Right. So they couldn't go out and say that now they're a corporate entity. So now they had to do everything they could to minimize who I was, right? Which was then the wars and the theaters that I had to go through to learn and to hold my position with my flag to then vacate the estate, which means they had to vacate the guidelines to elect a leader, which was the constitution. So that was, if your audience looks up title 39, 
Section 101, subsection A and subsection B, a post office in their own writing was supposed to have a constitution. Mm -hmm. And it vacated that constitution when they broke the continuance of evidence, which is these timelines of meritocracy that they've been following. So that was Title Title 39. What was the rest of it? Section 101, subsection A and subsection B. So the post office vacated its position for a constitution because the guidelines for the bankruptcy was the constitution established in 1789. So what what happens here is as that estate gets left, they have to create a scenario to fool the people, which is the Florida chats, right? And so the, the they got everybody looking at them. So they have to unannounce a president so there's nobody there in dc and then they try to come back in and reauthorize but now they don't have a flag to reauthorize under Mm -hmm. so they have to come under a yellow fringe flag at the u.s supreme court right to it's a different venue and then they went into the writ of certiorari court not the people's court so the slave court is what you would go to if you're going to the u.s supreme court Chances are you're going to the slave court, right? Which means you're going to go in, you're going to write a writ of certiorari, they're going to accept it. You're going to go sit in front of the judges. Judges are going to be on a different tier than you. The Article Three, three 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 yeah, the Article Three Common Law Court, which was the original volition for sovereigns, is actually on the second floor, right? And that's the one that I control at the U.S. Supreme Court, and it has a lot of games in it played within it too, because it's actually on the Masonic pavement. Right. So when you go into the U.S. Supreme Court, they have their own Masonic Lodge in there. It's it's a whole different theatrical function of what I call higgledy piggledy, <laughs> which is uh, a, an illusion upon illusion of false concepts to control mankind to mm-hmm. persuade outcomes of cases. And so when you go to the U.S. Supreme in the U.S. Supreme Court, like all the words are italicized on the wall. Well, why is that, Josh? All words that are italicized are misspelled in contract. Interesting. Right? So, absolutely are. Absolutely are. Yeah. You, you know why that is? Because you're changing the slant of font, which breaks the continuance of evidence. Hmm. Right? Because the first rule of contract is you must maintain continuance of the evidence and you must have knowledge. You must have comprehension of what's going on. Full closure. Right? Without the full closure, you have no you have no capacity to enter into contract. And that's what the general public has been missing since 1999 is the full closure saying, and they can't, they can't, for some reason, probably can't figure it out, right? Oh, we got a, we got an election fraud. No, you have no terms to set up an election. It's not that you have election fraud. Yeah. You don't have a, you don't have a term to, def- there is no federal elections commission. There, there's no flag for them to set up the terms for a contract. So it just blows my mind to watch the people over and over since 2000 do the same thing over and over again. And they're getting the same results. Now I will do, I will say that, you know, some presidents have got in there and have done the best that they could. But unfortunately, because of the fall behind networks and the, the, the choices that we have and that are th- pushed in front of our, our leaders, we don't have a pulse with the people. Right. The first rule of a senator should not be hanging out in Washington, D.C. He needs to be at the coffee shop in his venues, learning and getting the complaints and what the people's needs are. I agree with that. And then going back over there and saying, hey, my people need this. This is what my citizens who voted for me, this is what they need. These are things that are just not looked at anymore. Why? Because the lobbyists who have ruined that theater have come in and taken that why would a senator have to do that because the cuts over here and they again back to this medium exchange they put this value on mo- this monetary system instead of what the people's needs are what we need out here and it, a senator or representative could go to any community that the, he was supposedly or she was voted in and go hang out the problem is is they can't anymore might get their ass kicked right mm-hmm. so that's a whole di- that's a whole different thing for them Right. Because the people haven't learned how to go set the terms for their leaders. 
So we have to go be re back in and establish a new term, a new field, a new theater. And this is what I tender to the citizens of the world is that we could do that through the Title IV flag, but we have to come together. We have to learn how to communicate in quantum grammar because we want to keep it in the now space in your grammar because if you don't, and you allow these attorneys to enter into subjective interpretation about past tense definitions mm -hmm. and future tense connotations, then you create enough controversy to create war. Now, what you're talking about there in the sense of now space, maybe maybe this is important to touch on. Um, you're talking if I go into a courtroom in the modern day, I don't know anything about this. I'm ignorant of the law, as they would state. I go in there ignorant of the law. A lawyer can argue various definitions from various different time periods pertaining yes. in pertaining to the law. And the Supreme Court has upheld these variations throughout many years and various other courts. But, yeah, they put their subjective interpretation on what it means to them. That, that, exactly. What, so what we want to do in the quantum grammar is we take out the capacity for someone else to put a value on what the citizens' needs are for subjective interpretation. Mm -hmm. So now the citizens now control the fact of their free hyphen energy, right? Or or their cure, right? We want to move away from this concept of pharmaceuticals because that death agenda has happened. And those that have sprung this are going to be held accountable because, you know, there may not be many of us left when it's all said and done, but we're going to be all together. So right? the, the hyphen. <clears throat> the the hyphen is like when I write a check, right? Yeah. So if I write a check for like twenty five dollars, I do twenty hyphen five hyphen zero over a hundred or twenty five dash hyphen yes. dollars zero over a hundred, and that's to make sure that nothing can be implemented in between to misconstrue my meaning. Is that correct? Correct. That is correct. But if you were to take the hyphen out, and you put uh, twenty space five mm -hmm. or 205 you see what happens here yeah well if numbers are nouns and people are nouns why are we not doing that with our names yeah. and so that's why when i say my name i put the hyphen between my first name and my middle name russell hyphen and then i put a full colon gould at the end to control my last name and it's the same thing with time if we look on our time here on yep. your clock on your computer you have a colon between your numbers Right. If you were to drop that colon out, you lose the volition you do. of what you're trying to articulate, which is the concept of time. Now, does this derive a lot from Roman canon law in the sense of capitus alimutius maximus, capitus alimutius minimus, these types yeah. of aspects? Yeah, capitus diminutius minimus, maximus, and medium are very important on the on the social engineering and this runaway society that they've placed upon us and through this debt system, credit and debt system through the birth certificate system. So when you look at the, the concepts of capitus diminutius and how that implements into the birth certificate, mm -hmm. it's a very scary thing what they've done. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. And, and so we can look at various points in time when this happened but the act of 1871 was really the nail in the coffin for the the free aspect of the united states of america i think it started happening way before that there was ties with lincoln i, I talk about the 13th amendment the 14th amendment how these are really amendments of enslavement of humanity allowing for the perpetuation of contract law the easiest example of this i give to people is that the 13th amendment neither uh um, slavery nor involuntary servitude should be a state of mankind. Well, this is interesting because the Declaration of Independence, which is one of our foundational legal documents, states that all men are created equal by the power of their creator. So all men are already created equal. We did not need a constitutional amendment to say this, but if we look at the verbiage or the wordage that was actually expressed in the 13th Amendment, it's not saying a person should be cannot be in a state of freedom or involuntary servitude. It's instead saying that a person is in a state of freedom and a person can be in a state of voluntary servitude, which is contractual law. And then the 14th Amendment comes up and it says all persons born in the United States are citizens of the United States. Person as defined by the 4th Amendment is a fictitious entity, not the actual people, which is talking about a contract. So the 13th Amendment establishes that a human being can exist in the state of a contract. The 14th Amendment actually comes out there and makes a contract viable as a citizen of the United States. And this was the predicate for the Act of 1871. You know, they're set up the legal fiction through that. That's it. Right. And so they set up a straw man scenario to allow the corporation to control the man. And so, it's, you know, there's many thought facets, as you know, Josh, of sovereignty. Mm -hmm. right? There's sovereigns, there's spirit of sovereignty. Um, there's sovereigns that coin their own money. Right. There's, there's different 
concepts of sovereignty and and i sovereignty is 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 really a humble and a very difficult thing because it's about self governance and and controlling from the inside out right right and, and some of these things that we're we're having difficulties with is the bombardment of the pharmaceuticals the bombardment of the 5g all these things that they're using the nanotech and the food all of these things the fluoride in the water the the mercury amalgams in our teeth i mean you name it it's been a war theater against us from cradle to grave. Yeah. So we have to learn how to come together and combat these. You know, the 5G thing is going to it's a real difficult thing because it's programming our cellular memory, right? It's programming our cells. Well, I'm a chemist and so what I do to solve that is I take ammonium chloride baths. And hmm. if you hit yourself with a Geiger counter before you take bef- after you've been around the 5G, you'll go off like a like a like a f- fire engine. I mean, like, you're going to like, Yeah, like a fly on shit it, or it, something, right? Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> Take an ammonium chloride bath and then run and, and soak in it for 15 minutes and rinse that ammonium chloride off. And now you've restructured your cellular tissues to take off the radiation out of your cells. Interesting. Right. So so these are but this is not taught. You know, I know this because I'm in chemistry and on the metallurgy side. So I look at the chemicals and make chemicals to improve the quality of mankind's life, right? This is what real science is not to be uh, used to. It's always to question, right? Because we're always questioning science and it's okay to question science. It's a wonderful thing. But we also want to look at our science and use that science to help our fellow mankind. And it's very difficult because as a corporate entity on the straw man, they've bombarded through foreign enterprises, our patent offices in our former United States and worldwide by the Chinese government, who is Chinese citizens who are ruthless, who know no private property, who know no boundaries of theft, and they are stealing our concepts. So I shut down the patent office in 1999, which was nice. And so now I have my own patent position in quantum grammar. I've got a guy that runs that. So that's a whole nother theater. But the ability to get the concept out in in a market wholesale and I don't like to call it retail but sellable <laughs> position for our mankind that's where the fight is that's where the red tape is that's where they like they, they like to use the fumbling bumbling idiots the clowns in action to make sure that none of that stuff gets to our general public to help and then they give us this crappy technology of of electric cars which is by the way archaic technology right so they give us all 1900s technology yeah yeah but 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 it's but the way they went about it they know that they could go to a monoatomic cell cell right they know what they can do but they've made the choices not to to use it for themselves of course but not to give it to the general public instead when the when it gets cold outside the electric cars can't be charged and people are getting stranded cars are starting off they they give us trash Mm -hmm. right is, and so the, the 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 metals cartels know exactly what they're doing. They've done away with our ability to generate uh, uh, superconductivity metals. And when we do come across it, we have to fight off the fumbling, bumbling idiots who are in the way of everything in every theater. When on at all the labs, basically all the labs, you know, maybe there's a few good ones out there that you know have have old school ICP in different ways. But on the superconductivity and monoatomic elements, there's actually no testing material. You actually the testing element but what you have to do is be able to use it as and, and put the the temperature on it to become ambient temperature superconductors right so we can change out all of our lights they're giving us crazy led lights now to, to <clears throat> screw with the lines i mean they've done a lot to thwart the creativity of because there's great scientists around the world yeah. oh, so d- d- let's talk about that for a minute do, do you do you delve into the monatomic element side with monatomic gold, monatomic silver, the, the I, true mana of ancient Egypt and the, in the Hebrews in this type oh, of stuff? I do. I do. It's one of my favorite things to do. Right. And I, and I have right now I'm not working currently, but yeah. when I do work in those theaters, I was trained up by um, the guys that were behind David Hudson. Uh, so I don't yeah. know if you know who David Hudson is, but yeah, yeah John Sickfus and all that. Yeah. Those, 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 those guys, they trusted me with their technology because they saw the grammar as a way to put it, implementing it into society. And so, because the, they knew Hudson's patents were worth, uh, you know, they're worthless toilet paper because I can syntax them. Once I could prove the syntaxing on sentence structure, scientists begin to open up to me to how to use their technology and actually put it into the, the use of the people. And so that's, you know, that's a theater. It's, and I told them, I said, you kind of have to wait for that because there's too many bad guys running around right now. Right. And so we have to clean up the bad guys and then that tech will be implemented, can be implemented from the people to the people. 
So right. what Not- kind of benefits do we get though? So I, I, I've, I've actually had true, I think it was David Hutchins monatomic gold back in the day. This was early two thousands. Yeah. Um, but I actually, I ordered some, it was a really expensive vials, like 250 bucks when I got one of these vials. Um, and when I took this stuff, um, I had, I, I took like 10 drops under the tongue and yeah. I had one of the most profound weeks of dreams I've ever had before in my life. Uh, they were vivid, they were lucid, they were um, intricate, detailed, like spiritual. It was it was the more, some of the most fascinating dreams, but it also compensated in my real life, in my physical life, because the next days I felt really sluggish and really I, bad. Yeah, yeah, that that and that is what happened. That is what, that's what, that's exactly what happened to, to you. And so what happened was, is your synapses and your pineal gland opened up and it drained you because it mm-hmm. didn't teach you how to clutter off your Kundalini energy going from underneath out. Right. So there's mm-hmm. breathing techniques that we're not because ta- David Hudson just doesn't know. Right. That's, that's the, that's the facts, right? He doesn't know about the arcade, how, how our cell system works. He's, he's just passing it out. Right. So there's there's different techniques that if you go back and re- reestablish that, look oh, at you. Look already at, there look, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at look at look at cutting off your energy so that it doesn't you're not a total conduit and block it from one side. Hmm. Interesting. That may, that may give you you won't be shouldn't be as sluggish in the mornings. Interesting. I haven't done it in a long time. I learned, I, I've done a lot of um, regular psychotropic drugs throughout my life, throughout my teenage years. Yeah. And that's kind of evolved into me getting involved in the occult and esoteric mysteries in my teenage years, expanding on yeah, that. Exactly. Been yeah. two and a half decades into that now and, and study research, investigation, those types of things. Where with the people who understand this is that's where a lot of what we're talking about now actually derived from was these various secret societies, the, the hidden knowledge that they have kept from either – various different ancient cultures, mythical cultures, oh, whatever, yeah. and derived a lot of this knowledge that is hidden from us, secret or culted from us, to oh, what we see today. If you ever studied some of Nicholas Flamel's work, mm-hmm. you will definitely see where he was coming from as far as the uh, the the chemistry side, the, uh, the ayahuasca journey. I mean, there is some really profound stuff. The plant medicine is very healing, right? Then mm-hmm. we're just not given, they've taken that all away and exchanged it with pharmaceuticals. And, you know, the pharmaceutical p- companies looking forward to all the shareholders and their families dying off, I'm really looking forward to all of that happen and all the people that are forcing this upon us, looking forward to all their deaths and all their funerals. Seeing that in my mind, I hope your audience is seeing it too. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not going to beat us on this death cult. They're not going to beat our fellow mankind. We love each other. We're going to knock it. We're not going to be divided. And to come together and learn how to communicate in a way that we can get capture these guys in the now space to put their thinking on trial. And that's the value of the quantum grammar language is that you can pinpoint their performances to create these concepts that put this death con- concept on society to now get into the condition of mind on why they chose to do that as they confess by their performances yeah. and they have no answers because there's no answer to sheer meanness now we we can really address the spirit that's within them and so now we can bring in the the military and the faraday cages and we don't let that spirit escape as we neutralize them right Mm -hmm. and that's a whole different style of of death and that way the energy can't their energy can't be passed on and if you look at some of stephen's greer's work on on soul capturing and some of the things that the the top end is is doing right now uh, we want to make sure that we close that off so that spirit does not get back out interesting um that that's a completely different topic of conversation. yeah well, well when so, we kill no, these people no, no soul capture, when, I, when I, we I, catch I, all these guys yeah yeah, yeah. bring me to the table and we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that the science is there in place mm-hmm. that that energy does not escape right because we don't want that coming back into society yeah no this is actually interesting because um i, I want to pull something up real quick because i don't know if you're familiar with nostradamus no uh nostradamus's latest prophecies that deal uh, with the year 2023 oh i'm no, gonna no, read no. one to you oh okay okay, okay? i want to read one to you and this one they believe deals with the year 2023 okay oh, okay and i gotta find it real quick it should be right here um, there it is. Seven months of great war, P 
people die of evil, but their light will not fall into the hands of the king. Hey. Think about what you just said there. Hey, oh my, hey, it's the only way to. I've I've had I've had a lot of time to think about what I'm going to do when I get in front of these some of these jokers, mm -hmm. and you know, we want to make sure that the, the the society sees this, right? You know, we hear a lot of things out here, Josh, about you know the dumbs and that people things blowing. Society needs to see evil losing because mm. it'll change the psychological morale of who we are as a people going, yes, we got them, right? Yeah. We need to see that. So if there are good people out there doing these things that people are saying, which I have no way to verify, right? Yeah, I, either. I just don't. So I'm very speculative that, on a lot of stuff, trust me. I am too, right? Especially with the cloning and all the things that see that they're capable of. If if these things are happening, we need to, to tell those whoever's doing this, hey, let's let mankind see this, right? right? I mean, how difficult did it, could it be, really, to, to put a bullet in some of these guys? Really? I didn't think about it. It ain't that difficult, right? So, you know, it was just a matter of getting to the right theater, getting to the right spot, but but also make sure that we capture that energy. And it's very important that mm -hmm. we do, right? And there's things that the military has, especially you being a Navy guy, being at Navy Labs, you know that they the isotoping capture and all that, they got it down to a science if they want to. Um, I, I can actually tell people a lot about this. We actually discussed this. Um, th there's an article I'm writing right now on the multi-domain battlefield in the sense of how um, the current war that is waging on this planet is basically going through these various subdomains of society. So you have your social, you have your cultural, you have your institutional, you have your academic, you have your political, then you have supply chain, resources, this type of stuff. And then you have greater aspects of geopolitical. And each one of these domains are being infiltrated and controlled to various degrees by these globalist actors. But surrounding this is a primary domain of information. And this information yeah. domain actually started the transition in 2012, 13, 14, and 15 towards this modern um, consumption of information. So we moved away from the 30 minute and the one hour news broadcast of Walter Cronkite. And we moved towards one to two minute videos on YouTube or 30 minute blasts on social media or memes to consume information. It was during this time that I believe um, people who were very freedom loving patriotic went out there and began transitioning people to take over the idea of information to become the media. So we are now the media. And this is actually what we've seen since 2016, the modern day is we've hijacked this whole idea and conceptualization of of information and we now control it back into our hands and this is the first step in acquiring all these other functions of these domains and begin what? removing the infiltration. I, I totally concur with that. If, what I want to see, though, on those domains is I want to see the visualization to give the good people of the lands of the world the concept that help has happened, mm -hmm. and now you can see it with your own eyes. And this has to happen, and it needs to happen soon because they're coming with more scare waves. You know, We have not seen the end of the, the causality of these jabs. Mm-hmm. Right. This is a very and 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 the people that have done this, you know, they're running now because, you know, they're probably cloning themselves like crazy, I'm sure. Right. Because th th we'll get them all. There's more good people. I totally believe in my heart mm -hmm. that there's more good people in the world than there is bad. It's just a matter of full closure and having the right information. Once you have the right information and you can take the financial yoke upon these different theaters that that have been you know, held down in these third world countries because, you know, America's going third world, right? It's, it's the direction it's going, yeah. right? And so, and so it's unfortunate, but we should, as countable scientists, we should build a system and a platform so strong that it reaches those places that, that people were held down and you build the infrastructure back up there to give them incentive to go back. Give them something to live for. Let them be in their own cultural function, right? Because yeah. that's the one that they throw. That's the one that they they fight over so feverishly to be about. So don't come into another geo terra location and feverishly fight on something that you that was 
acceptable over here because that's not fair to our fellow mankind because it was doing fine in their ideologies over here. Right. Well, but this is interesting that you're saying this because we have to be careful on our nounage and our verbiage because we are on YouTube. But let's take this one cultural mm -hmm. infiltration that's actually happening right now. They're coming from their own domain substructure of ideology. And yes. they're amassing this and distributing it through the mainstream, through mainstream entertainment, through politicians, and they're pushing it out to the rest of the world as if it is a social norm and a, basically forcing and coercing society to, to, to follow it, to conform to it. And it's exactly what you're talking about right there, is they, they, they can have their own little substrates of culture. You can, that's fine. That's how it, humanity has actually evolved and basically um, been all right with so far. But when you start to take that small little ideology and expand it out, when it's only accepted by a small minor few, and you start to force it upon other people, that's when we start getting into tyrannical and oppressive means. This is where the idea of, uh, of tyrants comes about, or feudalistic societies, authoritarian governments, 1984, George Well, Orwell, and so forth. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. And, you know, it desensitizes us because you can't unlearn people once they see it. Mm -hmm. And so now now they've they've blurred and they've done away with uh, the capacity to put a line in the sand and say no, because the second you say no, then you're bombarded by all the social, like you said, the domains that now attack that position that said no, because you took a foundational position because you felt that that ideology or that domain trespassed upon the freedom of choice of what your moral value from within tells you who you are. And so it's very, very difficult to undo and unlearn as we see this, this nonsensical tir tirade come upon we the people. But we're smart as a society. We're good and we're caring and we're, we're going to fix this. And the way we do that is to go back to the root of the problem, which is not so much the theater of the election, but now re set up a new style of voting outside the parameters of the tech companies, outside the parameters of, of, of you know, because you guys have the postmaster general on your side, the mail that they're using, we can frank that, we can ship that a different direction. It doesn't have to come into our now space, right? Mm -hmm. So all of that can be re set up in a way that the people's needs are. Right. Right. So that and that's really what it's about is we already know what the problems are. The problems are is people are trying to kill us <laughs> and, and we don't yeah. like it and we don't like it. Right. I don't like it. I don't like people that I have cared about being vaccinated. I have very dear friends that are vaccinated. You think I'm real happy about this. Right. And their family members are all of a sudden breaking down with massive cancer and they're dead. People are dropping like flies all over the place. I think I'm real happy about this. No. Well, I don't think it's anybody a, is. And so it's not a laughing matter. It's it, not. These, people, these people that have done this shame. And, but like I said, there's definite ways to kill that off. We just as science and scientists, we need to be smart about this as we terminate. Right. Right. So, so tell me about kind of,